Mary Louise McLaws is an advisor to the World Health Organization, and she joins us now live from Sydney. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Uh, now, we saw uh, South Korea's president come out saying that there's the fear of a second wave with the uh, new cases uh, that came out yesterday, and China is in the same situation, it seems. What are your thoughts on what people are calling the second wave? I'm not sure I would call it a true second wave. Um, in, uh, in South Korea, they've do, they're doing a lot of testing. Uh, they don't have a severe lockdown. Um, and so it could just be that more mild cases are being found or that mild cases out there in the community weren't found originally. Equally in China, um, it could be that, of course, there, are, there is either another source or there are still mild cases happening elsewhere. But I don't think these numbers yet uh, should herald the fear of a second wave, particularly as China it ha has been very apt at um, uh, locking down uh, troublesome areas, getting people to cooperate. So I can't see what is often being called like a you know, pandemic influenza, you know, the 1918 uh, second wave. I don't think it will get to something like that in the next month or two. Well, Mary, there's been a lot of talk around the concept of having a second wave, especially with economies reopening around the world. Uh, when do we know for sure that a second wave is happening or not? Look, um, what a second wave will be... <clears throat> Um, on the epidemic curve will actually show that the numbers are as high or even higher as their previous peaks before. That's a true second wave. So at the moment in South Korea and China, you've got a couple of extra cases coming out of um, what we were thinking in China was uh, no risk at all um, with uh, a few cases, double figures, nowhere near triple or, you know, 80,000 as they had before. So if it was a true second wave, you'd be seeing tens of thousands of cases, which, mind you, we might get one day in Europe if we don't quickly find a vaccine or a prophylaxis. But right now, I don't think it heralds a second wave because I believe that the authorities will know how to handle this, given they've had a lot of experience in the last four months. Well, Europe is um, always just uh, behind Asia and in particular China and South Korea on the coronavirus. What lessons should they already be looking to learn from these new cases? Oh, that This is a really hard virus to control because a lot of cases are mild and people are ignoring these mild symptoms, which means that they can spread easily. So what we need to learn is, should we be putting in some sort of universal mask wearing when we're getting into public transport or areas where we can't keep social distancing? So I think we need to be very mindful that just because the authorities have uh, released us from some fairly strong um, requirements of staying indoors. It doesn't mean that we need that we can get closer to people. We need to keep 1.5 to 2 metres away from strangers that aren't in our family or group bubble. So this is a really stark reminder that this virus can come back sneakily at any time. Well, you mentioned uh, yeah. a vaccine uh there, uh, Mary. And the last we spoke, you kind of walked us through the steps it takes to actually reach uh, and have a vaccine that has been tested and people can use effectively. Um, and it seems like it's going to be quite a while until we reach that stage. Do you think that we can keep this virus under control without a vaccine? No, I don't. Um, I think that uh, demanding the social distancing, hand hygiene, and the occasional mask wearing when we're in, um, you know, close proximity is going to be very difficult. Uh, the southern hemisphere, of course, has problems with going into the winter months uh, with coughs and colds, so that when mild cases get a, a sniffle or a bit of a cough, um, they can then be pushing the, vi the virus out. So I think we will still get this boomerang effect until we get 
um, a vaccine. And of course, we do know that developing the vaccine, then trialing it, and then producing enough of it to get it out into the communities of tens of millions of people, and even in China, you know, hundreds of millions of people will take quite some time. So it's not going to happen any time in the next six months or even the next 12 months to cover all of us with um, a vaccine. So we're going to have to equally try to uh, work on our change behavior, you know, keeping the borders fairly closed mm -hmm. and also looking towards prophylaxis. All right, Mary, Mary Louise McLaws, thank you so much for that insight as always.